Daddy Garfu. Today I'm going to share with you how to turn all of this into. And hopefully you're looking at a nice shot of Leela in the hot tub, this hot tub, in a forest. And that's if I got it to work, but I'm uh, just a regular guy and I don't know how to do this. The stuff online isn't super specific. So I'm just, I'm gonna kind of take you guys with me on this journey and see if we can turn this into a hot tub for under 600 bucks. So let's start with what you need. First of all, you need a horse trough or water trough, whatever it is. This one's a two by two by six. It was like 220 bucks. You need a way to get water into it. So if you're at a campsite or your house or your backyard or wherever, you just throw a hose in there and you fill it up. And this is meant to be a hot tub for you to travel with. Something you put in the back of your toy hauler, the back of your truck. You can put it on the side of a lake or a river. You need a pump of some kind to suck the water in there. Now I got this Ryobi thing, which I like because it has little batteries kind of like this that it goes into. So it's great, except that I turn it on and it's super loud. Hey guys. <laughs> so that's kind of stressing me out. You also need a pump to circulate the water because the other main thing you need is this, which is a heater, which you hook up to propane. If you have propane in your RV, you just plug it in or you just take a little, little propane tank with you. So basically water trough, way to circulate the water, way to get water in and a way to heat the water and then some connections and some hoses right there. I've got links to all of this junk, this stuff I use in the description. Now, knowing that that water pump is really loud, I ordered another one. And the beauty of the one I ordered is I think it's one that I could use in here in case that one goes south. So it's supposed to be quieter than my Ryobi pump. It's smaller, but the downside is I need a power supply. So probably need like a 12 volt car battery to use that one. That one's not here yet. For now, we're gonna use that one, which I know is gonna be really loud. And that, that kind of bumps me out because the experience you want it to be quiet. So let's go ahead and do it. And I think all you gotta do, I think all I need to do basically is put a hole down here, put a hole down there, and hook all this stuff up and it should work. So let's, let's see how long it takes. I'm guessing it's gonna be all day. It's 3.31, I'm guessing I'll be done at, it should take like, you know, an hour, but it's probably gonna take five hours. So let's start the stopwatch. What's your guess? Post your guess in the comments below. How long do you think it's gonna take Trevor to build a portable hot tub? Can't even press the start button. Let's go. Already. I got my hole saw to drill a hole in the thing, but I can't connect it to anything because I don't, I don't know what that, what is that? I'm not, a, I'm not a contractor, I'm a regular person. I can't even start. By the way, I need a hole saw because I have to uh, put these little attachments in the bottom so I can have water in, water out, circulates, hot to cold, cold to hot, whatever. And this thing, it's reverse threaded, so that's confusing. And this thing may fit, but I don't have any way to use that. I don't have, ah, ah. That is a shot of Kaelin helping me here at uh, Grange Co-op where we are going to try to get the parts we need. Oh, did I lock the child in the car? That'd be bad, right? It takes 10 times longer to do anything when you have to uh, do these kinds of things, like bring a cuteness with you. She's as cute as can be, but she was up pretty late last night because her sister was getting born. Yo, tiny human. Ready? Ready? All right, let's go, yay! Yay! Let's go in the store and get Kaylin, okay? Climb on out to Baja. What's Kaylin gonna get for you? What's Kaylin gonna get for you? Um, do popcorn. Popcorn? What color? Um, yellow popcorn. Yellow popcorn? Okay, let's hope Kaylin gets the right one. Last place didn't have the drill bit attachment we needed. So I've got these two help me here at, where are we? Will we have it? I think what I need is that, just a shank for the whole size I have. And then I need a one and three eighths in case that one and a quarter is the wrong size. Yo, tiny human, thanks for your help. There's a baby fawn over there. Hi, buddy. Come on. So far this is going about like I planned. 
gotten nothing done and I started a very long time ago. I didn't want to show you the clock. So let me just get to it. I'm sort of drilling freaking holes. As you watch this, remember one thing that I don't have any idea what I'm doing, but this thing, this one and a quarter, I might be able to screw it in if I drew a hole that big, but I got this one and three eighths that I think is going to work a little better. Hopefully this is the right piece to go with it. All right, so I'm guessing this thing goes here. This is the one and three eighths one. And it's probably, re why is, what the? <sighs> okay, you can see that uh, it's taken just a little longer than an hour or two, like I thought. I just didn't have what I needed. If you have one of these things, you need to make a one and three eighths hole in the side of a metal tank, you need one of these things, and it's called a quick change hole saw arbor, whatever that is. I got this one. You can tell because it's got these two little doobobbies here. Can you see it? So that it will work with this thing. So I got this now, I'm gonna make some holes, and hopefully we can get this thing working. Oh, just don't make the same mistakes I did. Just make sure you get all the right parts first, then put it together. The parts list will be Listen below the stuff I used. This is actually the right piece. That's cool, but that's a half inch shank. Please, please fit my drill. Ah, what a relief. Ah, it's gonna work, man. I'm gonna put the hot water one there, the cold water one there. Remember, heat rises, I think, so uh, it should be on the bottom. And I want them far apart so that, you know, it'll circulate a little bit. Doesn't have to be totally symmetrical, but you know, symmetry is nice, so I'm gonna measure. And this thing starts to curve around 20 inches, so I'm just gonna go 20 inches over from here. That'll fit, actually, it's pretty big. I bet the smaller one would have worked. So for the other side, I'm gonna have the smaller one. Will this fit? Yeah. Progress, oh my gosh. They look pretty symmetrical, right? Actually, that one's higher. Should I redo it? Dang it. Next, we need to hook everything up to this water heater. First things first, you hook up the gas connector to the gas inlet, and one side goes into the gas tank, looks like that. You want to gently and lovingly connect this and not over crank it. This is the water outlet, the hot water comes out here. It comes with all of these connections except this fitting. I need this fitting here in order to connect it to the tank, that thing that you just saw me install. So I'll put this guy in here, and this, I'm just gonna hand tighten it. And this is a quick connect, so you can disconnect the hose easily, so I like that a lot. This is the water inlet. If you're just gonna take a shower, you could literally just connect the hose to this, and out from here, you could get hot water and take a shower with this thing, which you could also do if you're traveling, you want hot water outside or whatever. And here, we're just gonna connect this hose, and I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna hand tighten this one, and it's got a gasket in there, so this shouldn't leak at all. The other thing we wanna do down here is make sure we have batteries, and you take these double Ds, put those guys in there. So now we just need to hook these guys up to the other side. You're gonna to wanna to hang this thing up. I do not suggest using bungee cords. This thing's gonna get heavier when there's water in it. Those are probably gonna break, and I'll have to buy a new one, so don't do that. Use something more heavy duty. I'm just doing this setup here to test it, and then I'll move it into the forest. So you attach the propane like this. Any propane tank's gonna work. When you got an RV, you probably got one of those, right? And then you just put it on, open it slowly. When you open this slowly so it doesn't, uh, you know, freeze up. So we've got propane going into there now. And then you wanna hook up the hot water that's gonna go into this tank. And you just do that right here. I don't know if you need Teflon here or not. We'll see if this leaks. And if it does, a little bit, who cares? This. Green hose is our cold water. That's the cold water that goes into there. That could go, that could be directly from a hose. Just to fill this thing up and you would just plug that one so water wouldn't leak as you're filling it because you'd fill it with pretty hot water on the way in. But in our case, we're gonna run it into this pump right here. And then we're going to connect this hose to the water out from here. So this will be actually a source of water for circulating once it is full. So let's just connect this guy like this. And you want an adapter like this, so you can connect a hose to this thing. I suspect that some of this is gonna leak, so it might have to tighten a little bit, you might wanna grab a wrench or something. And now all we need is water coming in. Now remember we've got this inlet, so this is gonna be water coming in. And so we're gonna turn this one on, which is that way. Turn this one off, we're not gonna circulate to start. I'll just hook up a hose to this, turn the pump on, even though you don't really need the pump to get the water in, but this is gonna be kind of our middle man thing. Once it's full, I'll turn this off, and then the water will circulate. It'll come out from there, 
and go into here and just keep keep circular. Just be one continuous loop so it stays stays hot if you want. So let's go ahead and hook up a water hose to this and let's let's try it out. And this thing in theory is supposed to turn on automatically when you have water coming into it when there's enough pressure. And they say start with this all the way low for that's heat and all the way high for uh, water pressure. Because this is female to female, this hose, I need this adapter here that goes, that converts it. So you'll probably want one of those. Now this one could be coming from a river and when the thing is full, you just flip these so that it circulates. And we're coming from a hose, so it's gonna be the same thing. We just leave this open, leave that closed while it fills. When it's full, we just flip them. And I'm gonna go turn the water on, then hit this, and uh, hopefully water won't start gushing out and destroy the cameras. Let's go turn the water on and see what happens. Well, guessing I forgot the washer, dang it. Okay, so I've tightened that up, barely leaking. I put this thing on a little carpet thing so that these rocks, because I'm on this gravel, so these rocks don't poke a hole in the bottom of it. It's probably not a bad idea. And these guys aren't leaking yet because the water's too low. Notice that the pump is not on. It's just letting the water pass through. You don't need the pump until you're circulating from you know the pump into the heater through the jacuzzi or if you're sucking water out of a lake or river or something. And if you are sucking water out of a lake or river, you probably want to have some kind of a filter right there so it doesn't get schmutz into the pump and into the system. Now, this water is going from the faucet through that thing, which isn't even on, into the inlet here. And it is leaking a little bit. I could tighten those guys up, but whatever. Now, you'll also notice that this thing just turned on. I can't even hear it. 82 degrees. I want this to be 104 degrees, so I'm gonna just crank this a bunch and uh, see how hot it gets. And look at that, it's going up pretty dramatically, pretty quick. And if I test this water, yeah, it's coming out warm. See the water that's coming out there? I, I think it's gonna work. Now, this is not a super portable solution. You're gonna need, you know, a dolly or something if you're gonna take it down to a river or just drive your truck down to the river or lake. And I think it's gonna work great. So let's, let's see how it goes. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten those guys up a little bit while it fills, but it's nice that it's not that loud when it's filling. Just for fun, let's turn on this pump and see what happens, see how bad this is. You wanna see how loud the pump is? Let's do it. That says 57 degrees. I don't know why it's not hot right now, so let's see if we can troubleshoot that. When I turned on that pump, the temperature plummeted to the 50s because it was, I think, too much pressure. So I turned off the pump and then I turn the hose off, and when I turn the hose back on without the pump, it reset it, and this thing restarted, and now it's trying to get hot again. So I'm gonna just turn this up a little bit and see if it'll get hotter, if I can crank it. Oh yeah, I can hear the uh, furnace getting hotter, so I expect, yeah, there we go. We're getting, getting warmer. It's hot. Oh, perfect. This is what your setup would look like right outside your RV, but let's go, let's put it in a forest later. But for now, let's fill it up here and try it out. Oh, thank you. That's my son-in-law, Sammy. He is six foot five and he is fitting in there just fine. Now there are a lot of different sizes of tubs, lots of sizes of son-in-laws, but I got, I got the good size one. He protects my daughter, so that's kind of great. And that's uh, his daughter, little tiny human down there. This is a two by two by six water trough and they have lots of different sizes. For us, this works great. You saw that we can get Sammy in here who's six five and me and tiny human, no problem. This will fit in the back of our toy hauler, no problem, the back of my truck if I'm not hooked up. This is a fifth wheel, so I can't get this and hook up the fifth wheel at the same time, but I'm pretty sure it'll fit through this door. Let's go ahead and just measure that right now and see. This thing is not even two feet wide, and this is 28 inches wide, so I could totally put that water trough in here as well. So pretty much no matter what kind of RV you have, there's a way to take that with you, as long as your door's wide enough, and almost all of your doors are gonna be wide enough. So that's issue number one. We did have some troubleshooting things we had to do. Number one, this thing kept shutting off. One of the reasons this thing kept shutting off is this thing wasn't totally vertical. So I put something back here so it's hanging perfectly vertical, perpendicular to the ground. Another issue we had is that the water pressure wasn't consistent. That needs consistent water pressure. Another issue we had 
more troubleshooting is that we ran out of propane, so we threw another tank on here. And then again, we had an issue where it wasn't working is because this connection wasn't good, so it wasn't getting a constant feed of propane. So make sure your connections are all good. Some safety issues, this is propane, it's fire. Don't do it near combustible leaves. Don't do it indoors, inside a tent, inside an RV, that's super dangerous, don't do that. You will, you do this inside an RV that's closed, you will die, so do not do that. Make sure you're outside where there's plenty of fresh air and you've got rocks on the ground and not dehydrated leaves. We've tried this thing a few times, stuff we like, stuff we didn't, and the one thing that I really need to fix is that pump. I ordered this one, and this is just a pump that you would use in your RV to run your water and I'm expecting it to be significantly quieter. The challenge with this one is that <laughs> you just have these two wires. It's 12 volts, which happens to be a marine battery, car battery, or whole RV system. So I grabbed this, a marine battery. I'm not saying to get this one, just any marine battery will do because it's good for like running things for a long period of time. And I can't imagine this will take up much, much juice. Oh, ooh, let me see if it works. I'm gonna test it dry might be a bad idea this literally just occurred to me to test it now positive negative please be quiet now don't run it dry long because i'm gonna mess it up but let's see if it's quieter way quieter yay and with water quieter still <laughs> first i gotta make some cables so i can connect the battery to that without having me be having to hold it so i've taken a couple wires, connected them to these clamps, and then these clamps I can connect to the battery, and then I've got some alligator clips that I'll use to connect to the loose wires on the pump. You really want to use a crimper to connect these properly, and technically, you're supposed to bend the wire over the casing there so it fits in there, but this is a little bit too thick, so I can't do that. I'm just gonna put it in this way and get it in a little bit past the casing of the wire and then just crimp it. And because it's biting onto a little bit of this and a little bit of that, it should stay in there pretty, pretty securely. So now I can connect these guys to the end of that pump. Cables are done. Let's move this somewhere cooler than the side of an RV. How about into the forest? Let's see how long it takes to take down. We're gonna try it without this noisy monster, but we do need uh, this. Pretty sure this goes on this side because it's got an arrow going that way. So this is the water going in. Let's take it right here. Oh, this time I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use pipe tape stuff. <laughs> Wasn't that bad for a takedown. How long was that? I don't know, about, about that long. Now let's go, go find a forest. Don't do it that way. That was a pain. You gotta move it, stick it in your truck. And First we have to hang that tank up in the tree and uh, then we'll just connect everything and see how it goes. <laughs> this thing needs a lot of water pressure between 10 and 110 PSI. And if it gets too hot, over 176 degrees coming through here, then it's gonna shut off automatically if you're wondering why it's shutting off sometimes. So let's go ahead and open it up on this side. Oh, miracle, it does work as a pass-through. You don't need to have the pump on in order to send water through it into that thing. Whoa, holy heck. It's kind of losing its mind, I think, with all the air and stuff in the system. Hopefully it'll get that worked out and chill. But pump's not on now, so it's really quiet. And even when the pump's on, it's super quiet. Your neighbors won't know. So definitely get this one. Don't get the Ryobi. Now, if you want to adjust how hot the water is coming out, this can get really hot. It will scald you. So you got to be really careful if you're sitting right there where the water's coming in. What you need to do is if you want it to be hotter, turn this up. And if you want it to be hotter still, just turn the water pressure down partially. And with a little bit less water pressure, there's less water going through here, so it can heat it faster. Remember, you're dealing with electricity, water, and propane, so read the directions with that thing. There's a lot of warnings. Just be super careful if you know what you're doing. As soon as the tub fills up enough, which is in just a second, I'm going to turn off that water and just let it recycle. Here's a quick recap of what I did and how I hooked it up this time. Or there's the pump house. And I've got the hose right there hooked up to the pump house, and the hose runs into this pump or into a splitter into the pump right now it's on water is just going directly through the pump it's a pass through because i've got to go in the right direction and through that hose back there and directly in to this tankless water heater that's the cold in and then it's coming out here the hot 
coming into the hot tub here and you can see that oh it's bubbling and it's hot and it's getting warm it's pretty much full so i'm going to turn it off right now and then what's going to happen is this the water will come out of the tank already warmed up a little bit and then come into here and i'll turn this guy on and this guy off and turn the pump on and it will just recirculate the water let's go see if it works i've had to do this 100 foot trek up here like a million times but for you guys it's, it's worth it here's the faucet i can turn that guy off so we can switch things up down there and i'm going to run over here and show you something that maybe you don't know about we have another channel called forest untethered where we stream live 24 7. deer turkey skunk squirrels all kinds of cool animals come here all the time and it's live right now and Lila just filled it up got this little fountain so they can come and drink out of it We've got salt blocks we've got different kinds of food we feed them to keep their diet as balanced as possible and of course we have uh those guys there hey guys so uh, you're live you're both live talking to each other well you guys are live and this is a recording that i'm making right here okay this battery's about to die but let's see if we have better to see if we have better to make this make this thing go I gotta flip that switch come on battery make it make it battery okay turn the pump house off open that guy up everything's hooked up except this one little wire right here did you hear that hear it turn on 64. Come on, baby, get get really hot. There we go. That's what I want to see. Now it's hotter because it's recirculating hot water instead of the cold water from the well. So this can get very hot very quickly. And I actually bought something to uh, to check it. I'll show you in a minute. What do you think? This isn't bad. A hot tub in a forest? How cool would that to be come out to every night if you live in a forest or when you're camping or even in your backyard for cheap? And listen to this. This is how loud the pump is. Forget that Rayobi thing. This thing is the answer. Because you can hear me, I've, like I'm right next to it. You can still hear me. And yeah, the battery's bulky, and there's you know a couple little downsides. It's bulky, but dude, for like 600 bucks, this could be yours too. This is my plumber, Travis, and he just looked at my setup here and laughed at me. What's your advice, professional plumber dude? To tape and dope all the uh, threaded fittings. That keeps it from leaking. Right now, the water heater is kicking out 140 degrees out of here, so it's connected to here. So let's see how hot it is. How soon can we get in? It's 98.9.8. Getting close. The goal? I think the goal is like 105, is it? I have no idea. Okay, guys, it's finally finished. I can't tell you how giddy I am about this. This is such a great thing. Whether you're, you're in your RV, you can just go out anywhere, find a private space like this. We are like in the middle of the forest right now, and I can't believe it. It's just magical out here. I can see the moon rising behind us, the treetops. It's just such a magical place. So I, I'm going to go ahead and get in. Here's one of the unexpected things that we learned about this jacuzzi that I, I just didn't really know that we were going to love. It's unlike a traditional jacuzzi you get in. It's, we heat it up. It takes pretty, goes pretty fast on heating this thing up. You get in and we've been in here for like three hours. Typically you go in a jacuzzi, you're in there for 10 minutes because you get over hot. Well, this thing, you turn it off and it cools down enough. It's a gradual cool down that you really never get totally cold. We can put the heat pump back on for just a few minutes and heats it right back up. And I'm, I'm anxious for us to travel with this and take this. I think of so many locations that we traveled last year. I'm like, oh, why didn't we have this? This would have been great. But this, this is gonna see a lot of states, a lot of places. It's gonna, it's gonna make lots of travels. Since I haven't built a cover for it yet, last night we just covered it with a tarp, mostly to keep the tree leaves and junk out because, you know, forest here and also to keep the heat in a little bit so i'm going to see how long it takes for this thing to heat up after leaving it out all night and it was in the 40s last night looks like we're right around 74 degrees right now in theory all i need to do to get this thing cranking is hook up this connection to here that's what it sounds like not bad this thing automatically turns on 99 degrees you can at 100 degree water now let's see how long it takes to heat up to 104 degrees which is i think from what i understand the optimal hot tub temperature sorry got a little distracted so we're 39 minutes in 118 degrees oops in probably under 30 minutes you can reheat this thing and have this thing cranking 
even without a lid or any kind of insulation on it. We are gonna go ahead and make a lid for this. I've got a really cool idea that it's gonna serve two purposes and not just only gonna be a lid for this, it's gonna, gonna serve another purpose. So you're gonna wanna make sure you um, hit and watch in that playlist on the how-tos that are right up there. So we're gonna add that in there. We're gonna be doing that real soon. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and like it. And we look forward to sharing our adventures with you.